Welcome to episode 17 of Go Low Like a Pro. We're back in Scotland, we're back at Kingsfield, and we're back to have a lesson with everyone's favourite. You're very popular on the channel, <laughs> too. I, I almost went <laughs> <was> like, <"Sugar laughs> Seven again. Perfect, good start. So how's it been going anyway? Um, yeah, getting there ish I think. I mean, I haven't played as much. I went out, went on Hank. I nearly, did I, I texted you, didn't did I text you and tell you that? Oh yes, played, the front nine. Yeah, yeah, the front nine was like phenomenal. Um, and that wasn't hugely long after the lesson. Um, and that was literally sort of like, okay, my, I got my set up to the point where I was like, right, okay, that's a lot further back. And all I was thinking was heels and and turning. I wasn't thinking, I was trying like, all these other thoughts were like out yeah. the window. And it was like, keep your weight further back and just get your kind of, in my head I was like, and just swing through. Like arms were lagging, whatnot. Mm -hmm. I didn't really think about any of that. Relaxed arms, none of this stiff here and all this. It was literally just. Yeah. And um, and yeah, certainly the front nine anyway. It was like, and it wasn't even, one, it was easy, but it was it was green, it was fairways and greens. Oh, perfect. Or just yes. off the fairway, yep. but then hitting the green, two putts, done, next hole. And like really, really simple golf. It was, yeah. And then uh, to be honest, everything after that, it's still just a wee bit, one hole good, one hole bad. Right. Um, so not as consistent as we want to be, no. but we're getting there. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, yeah, we're certainly, I mean, I've, it's, it, yeah, it's a case of, Set up wise, it's like right, cool. That's that's becoming quite natural now. Yeah, that's good. quite fine. Um, and then sort of thinking, you know, get get my weight back. The last round I played in the last episode, I did a round at Richmond because I was down south. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to the range and I was hitting a few shots and stuff. And I was like, right, okay. When I play this round, what I really want to focus on, for me, rightly or wrongly, um, was keeping like my upper arms connected to my body. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, I was like, right, okay, so I was like, even if, that, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But just if I think about that, and that can be my sort of thought for the day. I played the round, mixed golf, we'll say. And on the 18th, I had a really crap drive, which meant I had about a seven wood into the green for this right. par four. And I went, da 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 da, and I was like, I had a practice swing. I was like, oh yeah, I was going to try and keep my arms close <laughs> to my body. Better late than never, eh? And I had a brilliant shot, but it was literally the last shot yeah. I hit, short of putting. Yeah. Um, and so I was literally like, whatever the you do, the next time you go out, remember that and see yeah. if it makes a difference. Because it's not, I, don't, I don't find it difficult to do when I think about it. I know that my natural swing, you know, I'm chicken yeah. winging and, and all this sort of thing, and that, you know, my plane can be all over the place, whatever. But if I literally just think, again, if I get my weight back, and if that's... You know, and the thing is, if I get you, the turn and I keep the arms in, in theory, yeah, it's quite compact. And you can actually then judge your your tempo right. by that movement. You know, rather than you know, something you think about keeping everything slow. Right. It doesn't have to be slow, but it does have to be smooth and connected. So some players, you know, do that with their shoulders. Some players actually do it with their hips, but it's not your hands. We'll have that nice grace period of a few warm-up shots. Of course, <laughs> of course. Always. Bit slappy. I've been I've become a very big fan of Duff It Straight though. That gets said oh, a lot. Yes. That gets said a, said a lot mm -hmm. on the channel now. <laughs> because what we'd like to have is not just hitting it straighter, but a, a slightly more penetrating ball flight. Yeah. So when it, it does hit quite. the air, it, it's not going to soar. It's just going to go through. Okay. Through the air. And how would we do that, Jane? Well, it's it's a lot. Well. I mean, your setup's change, which is great. We yeah. need to have a little bit more control with the lower upper body you're connecting, but now we've got to really get that stability. Okay. And that, that's what's going to make a difference, so that when you are hitting the ball, instead of getting a little bit maybe flicky through impact, so it's opening the club face, not necessarily opening it to the right, but giving it a wee bit more loft than uh -huh. needed. And that's why sometimes your ball flight can be a wee bit too high. I've always, yeah, I've always had high ball flight, so I think that's... What other sports have you played? Football, in, golf. I mean, any racket sports, not badminton not, or anything like that? A little bit, but not right. to any level, literally. Because right. like. sometimes, if, uh, you know, badminton, I'm rubbish at badminton because it's flick. But it's all flicky, yeah. 
Whereas, I was rubbish at anything, actually. <laughs> You're not rubbish at golf, Jane, well, come on. I can't hit a moving ball. Right, OK. I can only hit a stationary one. That's fine. <laughs> Just as well, You're not right? allowed to hit a moving ball in golf anyway. <laughs> but you often find a lot of players, you know, at impact, sometimes get they, get that, they get that that movement and it just puts more loft on the club face. Well, yeah, I don't know if that's just going back to, to not know. I don't know if there's some element of like getting your wrists through it has possibly been a, a good thing I've been told in the past, whatever, more power or... Yeah, but the, when the wrists are coming through, they've got to rotate. They don't, they don't, they they don't, don't do flick. That. Yeah, they've got to rotate. So it's more like a tennis shot. You want to feel, right. feel as if you're playing more of a, a forehand at tennis. Yeah. So tennis and golf's a good combination. Well, I was trying, I, was, I mean, because again, like, after the last lesson, where I, was sort of like, I was going away and I was like, okay, so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm turning and that my weight's here so yes. I can do this. And then in the living room, I started kind of doing, I, I was like, I, kind of making up my own drill because I didn't have to sort of do it, but I was just sort of going like this. Perfect, perfect. And I was literally sort of almost doing like a, yes. a, a step to step. That's it, thing. yeah. And I mean, I didn't try and hit a ball with that. I'm going to do that just because the yeah, camera's absolutely. on and it might be quite Go funny, it. but there's just this idea of sort of... Yeah, it's weight transfer, yeah. But it's timing as well. Of course. It is the timing of it. But it kind of almost felt then a wee bit like baseball. Yes, baseball. Yeah, I'll I mean, not, I'm not a huge baseball fan, but I mean, I watched it a bit when I was in America. But certainly, that idea of you see them, yes. you know, giving it that, yeah, and really getting through it. Um, not that I'm going to put that in my swing, but certainly with that drill, that's mm -hmm. kind of what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, absolutely sort of gets you out of the habit of uh, reverse pivoting and stuff like that. So, no, you're absolutely right. That was a good smack. Still very high, mind you. Just for. I'm guessing it won't be visible on the camera. That was certainly a lot lower, but it felt a bit thinny. Okay, let's have a wee look at that one. Cool. Okay, now, if you look at your right side, mm -hmm. okay? Left side's working quite nicely, but your right side, there. Yeah. See? See no, how it's either. going that way? Uh -huh. So, but if you actually look at what your foot just did, look, there it goes. So Lift you've up. rolled over. Yeah. And because of that movement, it's knocked your knee out and it's knocked your hip out. Okay. So that right foot really should still stay flat on the ground. You work hard, really hard to get back again, but at this stage here, we should have rolled onto the ball of your right foot and it's still flat on the ground. And now it lifts, but it's too late. Okay. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. Um. So what we're looking at is... So it needs to... That needs to stay down. Right, yes. Now, what we're going to do... I know this sounds really daft, right? But your foundations of your golf swing is from your feet up. Yep. So there's no point in decorating the rooms up here if the house is going to fall down. Yep. Okay, so what you're going to do, um, you'll probably, I'm going to borrow this club here just now. So if you stand there just for a second Damn for me, right? So you put a club down and you're going to put your foot on it like that. Okay. So when you start, look, you can't... You can't you roll can't. out. So the minute you roll out, the knee goes out and then the hip pops out as well. So by practicing, do you practice on grass sometimes as well, or is it always at the driving range? I practice well. Like, there's just not much in terms of practicing. Because years ago it was always just on a field day. Eh? You never had a driving range because if it was just on grass, you would just take a golf ball, stand on it. Right. But that that will feel weird just doing that. You want to try it? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, should um, I thought I had when I was when I was doing all this? It was, is it? Possibly that my stance is too narrow. Is that what's maybe making me think? Possibly. Po okay. Possibly. We'll, we'll go with possibly. Cool. So I'm going to stand on this like that. That's it. So you keep the ball of your right foot on the ground. Let's see how weird this feels. Do you know do anything slow? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> Slowly does it. That's now that's much more stable on the backswing. Right. Don't know how, how weird does it feel does it feel weird or not? Not really? massively. Um. That looks so much better. Let me this time put it on the different app. I mean, that's another one you always sort of like, oh I'm trying to get more club head speed, club head speed. And half the time I'm thinking I need to slow down. <laughs> well 
this is Cuphead the speed once you're secure and balanced, I suppose. But yeah, but club head speed doesn't necessarily like the, there's a difference. You've got club head speed and then you've got the speed of your swing. Two right. different things. So club head speed's miles per hour. Uh-huh. The actual physical swing speed is in seconds. Right. So sometimes you think you need to speed up your swing to get more club head speed. That's not necessarily the truth. It's just more of a bit lagging. Because you, you, you look at some, some, of the, some of the players, look as if they tickle it. But the club head speed will be really good. Well, so yeah, I, remember, I think I said last lesson that there's, you know, there's these two young lads down at Carmure's and I watched them and then was going home and sort of going like this. It looked like they were doing this. Uh-huh. Yeah. And absolutely smashing the ball. We interrupt this lesson to bring you a very quick apology. It's the first time I've been in that training room with Jane and obviously the lighting and sound and everything wasn't great for filming. Uh, I put the camera at the back of the room and you still couldn't see my feet. So apologies, uh, especially when it gets to something where <laughs> she's got me standing on something and you can't see it in the film. So I'm going to very quickly show you what it was. Basically, it was just an iron. It's got that angle of loft on it and Basically, that's all that we were doing. I was just standing on it with the outside of my foot so that I can't roll that ankle. And I had to put the weight down through the ball of my foot. That's all it was. Um, you can actually see it in this video. Now look how much more steady your knee is. Well done, foot's flat on the ground. That's what we're after. Okay. But you need to be just that little bit smoother on the takeaway. Give yourself a chance to feel the difference. Smoother as in just slower or? Yeah, just, just I mean, j yeah. On the takeaway, your takeaway should be the slowest part of your swing. So although it's, it's the easiest part to correct, the, the awkward thing about it is also the trigger to start everything. But sometimes we just, we just get a little bit too speedy on the takeaway. So from takeaway to waist height, there you go. And then feel, feel the difference, feel the power in your hips. Lovely. Sometimes the best golf you play is when you're not feeling very well. I've got a sore back, you can't hit it hard. Uh -huh. Just trying to ease it down. And you hit it just as far, but there's no fun in that. You see, you want to hit it hard. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> I, I, I did the exact, exactly that because there's the second hole at Richmond. It's not humongous, but it's like there's there's a road that's kind of drive driving kind of range, um, and I think possibly the longest drive I've ever hit there was literally when I was again trying to just keep it straight and do all there this sort of thing. And yep. I, it was, I think, I literally did that. And it was far further than any mm -hmm. of my, you know, contorted yeah. whatever, trying to smash it. Um, and that's a good indication for me. I'm sort of like, I, I very much remember that because yeah. it was just... It's technique. It's not... Because you've got natural strength anyway, you know, and it's timing. Sometimes if, if you've used all your energy on your takeaway, there's nothing more to give it impact. It's working from your feet up. Okay. Slow and smooth. That's good. Oh, that was nice. Now. Sounded good. Yeah. See the balance on that. You weren't jumping. There was nothing. That was lovely. Cool. So although this episode hasn't been the best technically. There has been some absolutely brilliant stuff there from Jane and there's more to come in part two. So until then, be good and if you can, shout for it.